Actually, underlying the most important part of the ERP is the finance. So for this period, for where we are now, I'm only focusing on finance automation. I have not yet built the ledger. So what is interesting for me now is that, actually I've encountered these problems many times. So what happened was I always try to build uh, workflow processes outside of the ledger. So I've done it outside of SAP, outside of Oracle NetSuite, outside of all the other ERP systems that are in the market. So one question that I really wondered for a very long time is why no one challenged these software systems? There was, okay, when I was in 2014, when I was an angel investor, I met this VC, but I cannot remember who that was. And I asked him, so what kind of companies are you looking out for? And that VC just said to me, never pitch me an ERP. <laughs> That, that five words just no. etch on my mind. It's like, when someone says that something never, there is an opportunity there. It's kind of like my whole entire journey is always about somebody saying, this cannot work. But it's not in their investment strategy. Yes, it's not how in their... How are you going to break it? So the, to break it is actually... So actually interesting. So there's a why now Correct. for Dodge. So Classic. for a very long time, I thought, yes, He's right. There's probably no way to deal with SAP, Oracle. They have network effects. They have all the things, correct pricing, etc. That is when generative AI showed up. <laughs> so the one, the two biggest problems in ERP is the following. Um, you're always trying to take your business processes and map it into SAP's business logic. And that's why a lot of the ERP implementations fail. Similarly for Dynamics, similarly for Oracle as well. Then, but okay, some ERPs were successful because they were willing to bend the rules to follow that logic. So the first thing is generative AI has now allowed you to be able to customize different workflows and help you to make those changes using AI agents. So that's the one layer. The second layer, I think, is the ledger. So one of the things that happened in 2017 is not the transformer paper, but there is a new ledger design that came out for the ERP side. And it's using um, something called events-driven architecture. And one of the theses I have is to build towards that kind of architecture. And what is beautiful was that when that happened, you need to think about the counter-positioning. Um, I don't know how familiar are you are with Hamilton Helmer's Seven Powers. Uh, Hamilton Helmer's Seven Powers uh, is about how companies can differentiate. So one of the most important uh, startup power must, that you must have is called counter-positioning. That means at the beginning, you design your business model to be in contrarian against the big guys. Once, at first, they would just keep ignoring you. But once the business model becomes significantly dangerous, they will start to emulate you. But in their side, they will end up cutting their costs and ends up going into a spi death spiral for themselves. So if you look at all the business models of, say, SAP, Oracle, they are all using license per user. So for Dodger AI, what we are doing is a pay-as-you-go model. And we deploy the ERP on your cloud, your security, your credentials. But we run the workflows using our own agentic library. And hopefully, if we can get most of the financial process done, then we will insert the ledger that we wanted to design. 